Hey people, um, it is five o'clock Eastern time, February 14th, 2022. I'm in Toronto, Canada and in Ottawa, which is this country's capital city, our prime minister has just declared something called the Emergencies Act, which is a suspension of civil liberties, although he's claiming it just gives the police, you know, more tools. Um, to deal with the trucker protests in the country. Um, it feels very, very much like an unnecessary flex by a leader who is not prepared to have his edicts and narratives challenged by the riffraff. That is what this feels like. Um, you probably know that the truckers' protests are primarily about mandates and uh, most Western democracies have dropped those mandates. All the prime minister had to do to end the trucker protest, which has the support of many, many Canadians, not all, but many, was to end the mandates, which is what most countries are doing right now. But he wouldn't do that. Instead, he had to show how powerful he is. And this is not a small thing, what, what he's done today. Um, I might say that I didn't think I'd see this in my lifetime, except that I'm old enough to remember when his father did it, 50 years ago or so. Uh, but in, in that, it was called something else, that it was called the War Measures Act, and people were actually dying in Quebec. Um, there was a, a conflict with some Quebec separatists, and he invoked the War Measures Act in order to quell that. It was very controversial. The truckers' protest has been completely nonviolent, and and even as much as the media are trying to make, they're saying it's threatening. It might not be violent, but it's threatening, right? It's threatening because it's working people who aren't staying quiet and who are smart enough to know that the mandates aren't working anyway, given that the vaccines are failing against Omicron to prevent transmission. They've um, invigorated the public. Many people who were feeling the same way but were kind of hidden away and afraid to say anything, you saw those Canadian flags waving over the overpasses in the country as the trucker convoy went through on the 401, which is the um, the main artery through through the country. So what he's doing today is a very, very, very bad sign. People like me, there were many of us two years ago who said, oh, you know, two weeks to flatten the curve, look out, because incrementally this thing is gonna grow and grow. Leaders don't give back power easily and insecure leaders who are drama teachers trying to imitate their fathers, that is my take on, on Justin's big moment right now. Um, they don't like to give the power back, you know, because they don't win it naturally, right? They've got to take it. They don't win it. Leaders lead. And Justin Trudeau's way of leading against the trucker protest was initially to start with the American slander playbook of misogyny and racism and all of these terrible epithets leveled against people he doesn't even know. That didn't really work. In fact, Bill Maher the uh, late night comedian and talk, talk show host actually called Trudeau himself Hitler <laughs> uh, for speaking about Canadian citizens that way. And he was right to do that. What Trudeau said was a national embarrassment. He said that these Canadians held unacceptable views as if he is the arbiter of what acceptable views are. I mean, this is really power run amok and it's power that grew and was conveyed based on the public health measures, right? Many people were warning about that. The other pillar of this is that the mainstream media has played along. They have played along in smearing the trucker convoys and the truckers and the people supporting them. They've played along in supporting public health measures that either weren't working or were costing way, way too much in lives and businesses and ruined families and desperate children and suicides and all of the other terrible things that have happened as a result of these measures. The lockdowns themselves have been proved now not even to have saved lives. So all of this collateral damage for nothing, right? These, these people have a lot to answer for. Vaccines that were 100% effective according 
to the company and then according to the mantra of safe and effective, safe and effective, now not so much. Everything they've done, including ignoring early therapy and protecting the actual vulnerable by letting the re and letting the rest of the people get on about their lives, all of the things that they rejected uh, were actually things that could have saved public closing gyms. Now everybody's fat. Obesity is a huge factor. We've known that for almost two years. Everything they've done has made it worse. And the leaders responsible for that are either kind of slithering away and dropping the public health measures that they know they can no longer defend, except in Canada, where they're kind of doubling down. Like, it, it's clear Trudeau cannot keep the mandates up forever, even hinted they might be coming down. But they will only come down on his time if he gets his big flex for the global community that he so desperately wants to impress. This is a very, very sad day for for the country. And I would say to um, if there are any human rights organizations out there watching what's happening here, that you should really take a look at this because the invocation of the Emergency Measures Act in this country, it's a very, very extreme thing to do, was completely unnecessary. He could have dropped the mandates and he didn't do it because of his ego and because he was trying to prove something. That's dictatorship. That's tyranny. Demonizing a part of the country that doesn't agree with you, that's a dictatorship. That's what's going on here. And doing it with the approval and support of the media, boy, that's really, we're really in trouble here. So if anybody's out there in another country and you want to file a complaint on behalf, you understand unvaccinated Canadians can't travel. They're not allowed out of the country because of his mandates, right? And so with these measures now in place and not being able to leave the country, when when is somebody going to step in and say, you can't do this to people? When are people going to jump in and say, Canadians require their dignity back? And um, I'll just say this in, in closing, that there were some counter protests to the truckers. I get it. They're noisy. They're honking, taking over your neighborhood. Nobody likes that. But I did see in some of the counter protesters, aside from the people who were just irritated, they have every right to be, of course, there were people who actually literally don't understand the actual science behind COVID and are afraid. They've been made so afraid by this government, by Trudeau's government and by the provincial governments and the public health officials that they will never ever be able to go back to not being afraid. They want to be oppressed because when they're oppressed with these draconian measures that don't even work, they feel safe. They feel safe. Imagine that Canadian citizens arguing against freedom because they want the safety of oppression. That is where we are now. And um, I hope you'll you'll visit us on uh, on my podcast, which is Trish Wood is Critical, on Apple, Spotify, and Stitcher. And I hope that people out there, not in Canada, are watching very closely what's happening here because I'm really worried about it. Anyway, see ya.